This is a team effort. So a foundational pillar to success is people. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Defense on this side with me. This is great work and tempo. Let's go, let's snap it, man, let's snap it. Put it up, give me some juice. You wanna be great, you gotta work at it, right? Everybody's in this together. One team, one goal. A new era, a new beginning. Bring the blue. Let's go, blue! One, two, three, times. Welcome to the season debut of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. I'm Bob Papa in the Quest Diagnostics Training Center. The Giants kick off their season on Sunday afternoon in Tennessee against the Titans each and every week here on the Coach Dable Show. We're going to get you set for the Giants' upcoming game with a little preview. Carl Banks is going to go to the coaches' tape with strategy, and we'll take you inside the facility as well for a behind-the-scenes look at the New York football Giants. And I'd like to welcome in my co-host, Two-time Super Bowl champion Carl Banks, and it's called the Coach Dable Show for a reason. Giants head coach Brian Dable. And, uh, Coach, obviously this is an exciting week for you guys on Sunday. You play against the Tennessee Titans. Just talk about what this journey has been like for you and your staff to get to this point in the season. Yeah, I'd say a lot of hard work. You know, not just the staff. I'd say the support staff, the scouts, everybody that works in the building, and then most importantly, the players. Uh, put a lot of hard work into it and looking forward to going out there putting our best foot forward. Coach, so it's your coaching de head coaching debut. You've been around a lot of great organizations, a lot, of, a lot of people that you've learned from. Aside from the coaching aspect of it, right, is it make sure I keep in touch with the kids, the wife, and the week's going to get hectic. Is there a personal checklist for you? No, it's all football right now, Carl. Yeah. Um, you know, my wife does a great job at home and taking care of our family. And, you know, right now, you know, Tennessee is all we have in mind. Coach, um, obviously, you know, this is going to be a lot of fun during the course of the season. You and Carl are going to get a chance to sit down and do a little X's and O's. Earlier in the week when you met with the media, you talked about the fact that Mike Kafka is going to call plays. You gave it a little test run during the preseason. You told us how tough it was in that first preseason game. You were like all fidgety. You didn't know what to do because that's what you do. How hard was the decision for you? Well, Mike earned it. He did a great job. He's done a, a really good job with the offensive staff, you know, in terms of leadership role and organizing the game plans, putting his thoughts together. It's a collective effort on the offensive side of the ball. And, uh, you know, I think Mike's going to do a great job. So with that said, you guys had a shootout the last time you faced each other competitively. Like it was shot for shot, right? How much input into the, obviously it's one philosophy. But like when you sit and you you guys talk about that, do you say, Mike, I think I might like this play over that play? Yeah, I think there's really good give and take. Yeah. And, and Mike has the same thing. You know, he's played against Tennessee as well uh, last year. And again, all the assistants have done a good job of contributing to their roles and, and their specific areas that they look for. Uh, there's certainly things that, that I might like, um, but, you know, I don't want just everyone to agree with it just sure. because I like it. It's a it's a group effort. Uh, and I've met with the defensive staff. Um, you know, I meet with them every day. I meet with the special team staff every day. I think it's important as a play caller to feel really comfortable with your plan going in. Um, I know it was for me, and, and I'll give you know Mike the latitude to do that. How important was it for you to know that, like, on game day and as the game's unfolding, instead of having to figure out, hey, what didn't go wrong on that series, corrections have to be made, you're now looking at the whole picture and, you know, how are we doing on clock? What's going on over here, Wink? A uh, T-Mac, what specials? How important was it to have that leadership role over everything? Uh, I think it's important. You know, I have a lot of confidence in, in Wink and T-Mac and Kafka, so that makes it a little bit easier. And I also have good people up in the booth that, that are helping me with a lot of different things. Uh, it's a group effort, uh, but I think it's important to, to make sure you're, you know, understanding where you are at the game, what decisions you need to make. And you can, you know, give little information to whether it's Wink, T-Mac, or Kafka as the drives are going on. But, again, I want them to feel comfortable and get into a rhythm with what they're calling. When you get to that space, obviously you've been through training camp, you've been to OTAs and mini camps. And a lot of these coaches you're coaching with for the first time. So what was the situational coaching like there just to get to the philosophies of how they approach things and how – it just it kind of molds into one general philosophy. Yeah, that's a good question. We spent a lot of time on 
on situational play calls and and how Wink, you know, has approached it in the past and, and ultimately how we want to do it as a giant organization. So there's been a lot of good uh, tape evaluation, tape watching, good conversations on, on really all three levels um, so that we're ready to go when it, when it counts the most. Each and every week we're going to embark upon this journey. Uh, as you've gotten to know this area, this community, and the giant fan base, what are some of the things that you hope to share with Giants fans each and every week as we do the show together? Yeah, first of all, it's an honor, to, to, again, to be here in, in this position, and we're going to work as hard as we can work each week to put a good product on the field, and, and you, your support doesn't go unnoticed. I'll tell you what, folks. Uh, we're going to hear from Coach a little bit later on as we dive a little bit more into the Tennessee Titans, but one of the cool features of the Coach Dable show, Carl and Coach are going to get a chance to sit in the auditorium and take a look and talk some football. That and a whole lot more. You're watching the Coach Dable show presented by Stop and Shop. Hey, now I want a good performance today. Yep. All right, and I know it's hot. I got all that pads. We got, we got to push through it. Yep. Okay. We got to see who's mentally tough through this hey, stuff. Michael, this ain't Alabama hot. Oh, Let's have our best practice at training camp today. Oh, yeah. Compete our asses off, be smart, and get after it, okay? That's what we're looking for, and that's what we need. On a hop, on a hop, on a hop. Let's go. We're moving, we're moving, we're moving. Set the edge, man. We'll set the edge in the running game. Attitude. You either got it or you don't. Details, fellas. That's all it is. They know it's a run. We know it's a run. What kind of attitude are you going to have? Come on! Come on! Hey, hey. That a baby. Hey, keep keep building your leadership now yep. out here, okay? Gotcha. Doing the right thing on and off the field, being a playmaker, right? owning it, right? Yeah. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show, brought to you by Stop and Shop. So, Coach, it's time for me to get smarter, and it's time for our fan base to get smarter. Take us through some of these successful plays. You got three that you want to show us. What I really want to learn is when things go right, you're going to point out, okay, this had to happen, this had to happen, this had to happen. Take us through that. Sure. Well, here we're on first down here. We're in the red zone. Uh, against New England here in the preseason. And we're at seven yard line. And you know this was a, a situation here where we got down here in the preseason on, on first down, we were gonna try to, to throw the ball into the end zone. Uh, in this case, we used a double move uh, with both slot guys and both outside guys. And New England ended up bringing blitz zero. So can I ask you a question sure. right now? When you got your slot that far in, it gives you a lot of room to work with. Mm -hmm both ways, right? Is it does. That, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, and I mean, there's other things that happen defensively, how they want to adjust the splits and, and things like that that we can try to use as an advantage. It doesn't happen all the time, but uh, this is a case where it did. Um, so we go ahead and we get into a condensed split, and they're playing off with their, their secondary players. They ended up bringing six guys on the rush. We had six guys in protection, and, and the good thing here that happened is their safety that was shown in the middle of the field, he really has the back. So when Gary steps up for protection, this guy moves over to this side and really opens up a window in this area for Richie, who's running a double move. These guys are running out goes down near the goal line, mm -hmm. and these guys are kind of running little nod routes, if you will. And Richie actually gets kind of stuck outside of 33 here and just does a really good job of adjusting on the route and creating space for Tyrod. It's good protection up front. We're all, you know, we'll get a hat for a hat. Tyrod moves just a little bit, and I think he feels this guy, but does a nice job of, of finding the open player there against zero coverage. So you got, you got a window. You talk about the window that was created, but it's cause and effect because when Gary steps to his right, the safety's eyes are immediately on his responsibility. That's right? exactly right. So then that opens up a window. Right into this spot right here. You know, we got one-on-one -on -one matchups outside if we like them on the, you know, we call them outgoes. Mm -hmm. But I think Tyra does a really good job of, of seeing this safety. Look, sometimes they hug rush and there's an extra guy and you got to get out quicker. In this case, he stayed back to try to help out on the pattern. He does a really good job of just going to open space, not leaning too far in where this guy has the potential to make the play. Now, this is, this is from the end zone look, correct? Yeah, this is the end zone. So when we talk about the safety's eyes, you see the safety's on the back. He slides there. If you freeze it, there's your window, right? There it is right here. Yep. It's 
good to see, you know, all these guys come down and celebrate with their teammates. It's not just the, the person throwing it or the person catching it. You know, it takes all 11 guys, usually on offense, to make a play successful. And the quarterback on this particular play, he knows he's reading the safety once he gets the look he needs, right? Yeah, so. he, he, he saw it was blitz zero, which, yeah. you know, everybody's got a man, and now it's just where is that, where is that safety going to be? Is yeah. he going to add to the rush, which makes us throw it even quicker? Or is he going to cheat to the player that he has, in this case, who was the tailback? Got it. All right, let's go to the next play. Sure. I thought this was really a, a good play here by Antonio Williams, who is playing our, our five spot, I believe. Um, we're coming out at half. I, I didn't think we were played particularly well in the first half in the kicking game well enough. And I thought this was a good tone center, getting them really down inside the 20. So it's just a five by five kickoff. And a couple of things really stand out is, is really these fives right here, they're, they're, they're flying down there along with McFadden who folds back as a four, doing a really good job, these two players, of, of beating the blockers to the kick side. And Roche does a really good job of walling it off inside, funneling it back into these players who are coming down here. They do a good job avoiding the, the blocks and really a, a good hit by Antonio. We like him to keep his head up and, and not lead with it. But these guys do a good job of getting to the ball. And, and this, is a, you know, this is a tone setter play. And you can see the excitement from, from 21. The fives are normally your disruptors, right? No doubt like about it. Like in the, the old days, the fives used to be called the wedge busters because they get down there and they disrupt everything. Now that that's disjointed, they get, they get an opportunity to kind of weave in and out of that. That's exactly right. And, you know, if one guy hits his lane, the other guy replaces to his lane. Just really good job by the three of these guys getting down here inside the 20. And, and a small, you know, over here, Roche of doing what he's supposed to do on this play for us to set up a gang tackle there on a 16-yard line and put our defense in good field position. And we talked about complementary football, you know, earlier in the show, and, and this, is a, this is a great example of that, you know, the special teams helping out the defense. So I was once a L5 and L4. So did that make me tough and fast or just yeah. crazy? Uh, probably a little bit of all three, yeah. Uh, and you know the rules really have certainly have changed. The, the rules have certainly changed with the wedges and things like that. But uh, just a really good play to start the second half to put our defense in, in good field position. All right, now let's take a look at the defense. What did you like about the defense on this play? Yeah. So again, when you're watching tape, you know, usually when you're an offensive lineman or a defensive lineman, you know, you're always watching it from the from the end zone mm -hmm. view. And I just think it's a, a good example here to take a look at it from the sideline view because really football is about the line of scrimmage. I think this is just a, a really good example of really similar to the Roche plan, a special teams play, where Fox does a really good job of setting the edge and forcing it back to his help. And I think we're doing a good job of firing off the ball and playing with our hands and resetting the line of scrimmage where these second level players, these linebackers, or these safeties, can do a good job of flowing, hitting their gap responsibility, and making a play to put them in a negative situation on first and 10. But it all really starts on the edge with us of setting the edge and, and trying to force it back to our help inside. And, you know, a lot of people, when, when, when people hear set the edge, does that mean, oh, he just has to be outside? Um, or does it mean you have to separate and be able to make a play once you set the edge? No question. A little bit of both here, Carl. Like this, we want this guy to get as much knockback as he can while being under control. If he needs to shed and make a play, he can shed and make a play. But as you can see, you know, look, our outside linebackers work extremely hard at this technique of forcing that ball back inside. The easiest yards to get as an offense is you just take it and run around the edge. You mm -hmm. get five, six, seven yards. So you know, not getting reached, playing these blocks. In this case, they're just reach blocks with the offensive line zone blocking. And I think Fox just does a really good job here. And there is a correlation, too, here, because as you see the running back head straight towards Fox, as soon as Fox head shows, he has to turn it back in. He knows there's nothing to go, nothing that's, going outside. That's exactly right. Most of the time on these outside zones that offenses are running, you know, that edge player is their read. Mm -hmm. So if this guy gets reached... You know, he's going to go around the edge. If there's an edge set like this, this guy's got to make his decision, usually after the third cut, after the third step, and make a cut to get it north and south. 
and this is where these linebackers and their gap responsibilities have to fall in. And these guys up front, you can see right here at the nose spot, I mean, he's getting reached a little bit. He's on a backside shade, but he's really taking up two blockers so he can help this second level guy out. You got two on one, one of our guys should be free. And one guy runs right through the hole there. That's exactly yeah. right. You know, we're always being alert to the boot with our backside guy with this quarterback coming out. And it's, it's all complimentary football. When you look at it here, the edge is set, 43 is sitting right in the hole, the cutback lane. Yep. And you've got your defensive tackle occupying two. That's right, and we got a force player coming yep. down into that C gap with our safety. So again, it all starts at the line of scrimmage, you know, whether it's blocking the blitz zero that New England showed or, or winning up front with our defensive line and their offensive line, that, that's where the game is played. Um, and that's why it's so important, you know, those pieces that we have in place to play well. Now, this is not, this is not a read and react defense either, right? It's, it's get hands on and push back. That's it's exactly back, right. right. Back back. Yep. Change the line of scrimmage. That's exactly right. So safe to say, by the virtue of the way 43 just runs through, that line of scrimmage has been reset. That's exactly right. And I think he just makes a good instinctive player, McFadden, of, you know, see ball, get ball, when you got this big open space in here. I think he just makes it a, a really good play and a good wrap-up tackle on both legs. But if his defensive lineman is back in his lap, he can't make that. That's exactly that right. And, and resetting the line of scrimmage is, is really important for us. All right, we'll be back with more of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the debut of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. It's the Giants and Titans in Tennessee on Sunday. Time to welcome in Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara as they go head to head. Well, in this edition of Head to Head, we go to the respective running games. And, of course, that means that Dexter Lawrence, the big-bodied defensive lineman for the Giants, is going to have his work cut out for him against the Titans' Derrick Henry. He told us earlier that he is a problem. A guy like that, like you said, he's massive. So, you know, you just got to get all 11 guys to the football, flying, wrapping up, and uh, bringing them down. Um, he's definitely one of the key guys. So, you know, definitely going to be, you know, a target on him. That's, that's, their, that's their horse. Is, is his power more impressive than his size between the two things? Uh, I, think it's, I think it's his speed. Like, he's even fast, too. Like, a guy that big moving that fast. Um, so we just got to stop him before he gets going. And, you know, that's just, like, that's just how we're going to have to do it. Dexter Lawrence comes off a career season, Sean, where he had 54 tackles. Uh, but this guy, Henry, he's about as good as they come. Yeah, no doubt he's talking about the speed to go along with the power. And I think that's one of the things that gets lost on a lot of people is for as big of a guy as Derrick Henry is, he gets downhill quick. Now, we heard Dexter talking about, look, it's going to take all of us. Defensively, Wink Martindale, no doubt, is telling him, hey, we got to swarm. Rarely does the first guy there take Derrick Henry down. So it's got to be a tackle by committee. All 11 helmets got to get to the point and get to the ball. But I think for Dexter, the, the biggest thing for him as he battles Ben Jones, the center for the Tennessee Titans, is he's got to he's got to kind of play peekaboo, right? So it's a tough job as a nose tackle. In you've got to play vertical, you got to have vertical leverage on the center and horizontal leverage as well, and you're you're trying to force Derrick Henry to cut back. The one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to let Derrick Henry take the handoff and just keep a play side and never have to stop his feet. So that's the challenge for Dexter. You want, you want to get some sort of penetration that forces him to cut back and slow his feet down. Because uh, a, a big guy like that, if once he gets rolling, it's tough to, to take him down. So you don't want to get him in the second level. So for Dexter, it's keep you know front side peekaboo, and then if he as he cuts back, you've got to also play that gap as well. Well, you talk about Henry's speed. Twice in his career, he has run from scrimmage for 90 plus yards on a carry. Once he gets into the secondary, he is very dangerous. Well, let's flip it to the other side of the running back equation, and the Giants have Saquon Barkley going up against the Titans and defensive tackle Jeffrey Simmons. So I asked Saquon earlier about the challenge in going against that rugged defensive lineman. He's a very pivotal player. He can move anywhere. So we just got to be aware where he at on the field. Um, not only him, but, uh, you know, Bird, all those guys. They're, they're really good defense, and they've been really good for the last four or five years. So um, but as, a, as a running back, you're excited for that. You're excited for that challenge, and um, look forward to it. 
Now, last year, Simmons was second team all NFL. Sean, 54 tackles, eight and a half sacks. He can beat you in a variety of ways. Yeah, he's a disruptor. And no doubt Ben Bredesen, that left guard, is going to have his hands full. And for Mark Lewinsky, he's a veteran. He's gone up against guys like this before, so he knows how to handle it. I think the two words that really jumped out at me when Saquon was talking was get downhill and get vertical. And I think that's the Saquon we've seen all throughout training camp. He's aware of how decisive he needs to be and how he needs to hit that hole. You don't want to dance around and you don't want to spend too much time in the backfield. Guys like Simmons can attack and penetrate and disrupt the, the running game. So uh, I'm e eager to see how they start out the game. You know, the Giants ha have run a couple of two tight end formations to start out the games and just kind of ease their way into it. And you can get a lot more downhill and keep things front side. For Saquon, though, I think his home position in this offense is going to be from the shotgun. So uh, that's going to be something to watch for. And no doubt for him, he's going to have his eyes on where Simmons is lined up. And I think John Feliciano, the Giants center, can also help out with some double teams there. Yeah, no doubt. He's going to be doing a lot of combo blocks. Um, you know, I think one of the things that, that – you want to do when you have a defensive tackle that's disruptive like Simmons is, is sometimes you run outside zone. Try to get outside of him. Don't let him disrupt the A and B gaps. But if you can find a way to down block with a tackle um, and then get a perimeter run, maybe a toss sweep or, or a quick little pass, that's some of the ways you can neutralize an interior lineman. Well, in any event, we do expect Barkley to be the key member of the Giants offense. Averaged 23 touches as a rookie. Last year, only 16, but I think they will force feed him against Tennessee. For Sean O'Hara, I'm Paul Dottino. That is our head-to-head -head matchup for the Giants and the Titans. Back to you, Bob. Those are some of the key matchups to watch. When we come back in the program, We'll take you to the coach's tape with Carl Banks as he breaks down the Giants and Titans here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Here we go, man. Hey, let's go, let's go. Defense on this side with me. Come on, let's go, let's go. All right, here we go. Well, you guys are going to be aggressive. Just Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've thrown so, everything out. Yeah. So I'm going to be aggressive. Keep your mind right. First, first, get out, get out, get out. Pad level down. Eyes up here, eyes up, sell the go. Make sure he's set. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. All right, good job. On the ball, on the ball. If you take it, you better make it. Damn, that's the best I've seen him do now. All right, they're going to clock it, they're going to clock it, they're going to clock it. You got to hurry up, you got 10 seconds. Count to three, count to three, yell. Five, four, three. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Fullback leads you. That's you right there. Catch, tight turn. If he goes out, just let him go. Don't bow it all the way out. You lost yards. That's some good 2-6. Complimentary football. Yeah. We all got to be playing well okay. to make it all click. Good decision. That's a touchdown. Come on. Eyes up. Come on, make me feel it. Feel it. Great eyes. Great eyes. Oh, he's moving. <laughs> Tutty. Yeah. Coach Dable has certainly assembled an outstanding staff. The coordinators mic'd up as we welcome you back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Giants take on the Titans on Sunday. Time for strategy with two-time Super Bowl champion Carl Banks. And Carl, you know, Tennessee is a little bit of an outlier. This mm -hmm. is a passing league, but when the Titans line up, they're going to feature one man and one man only, and that's Derrick Henry. Yeah, and you have to commit to it because this Titan team is committed to running the football because he can catch it. He's got speed, he's got power, and he breaks tackles, Bob. And so we're just going to take a look at his first run here. Quick jab step, little old school jab step. So he's not hard to find. Let's just put it this way. If you're a middle linebacker, you're keying this guy here. So when he goes here, you go here, and then it's like a dance. But he's not hard to find, as you can see. Here's a guy that has a clean shot on him, but a bad angle. You've got to take good angles against Henry, and there's another guy who had another bad angle. You've got a close space, number one. So, Bob, when you're, when you're going to tackle a guy as big as Henry is, you get free. You've got to square. His shoulders are here. Your shoulders are here. You cannot do that. You've got to be here to bottle him in. And then as this play continues... Here's another guy. I'll freeze it. He's taking a bad angle, and it's almost like he doesn't want to make the tackle. He just wants to show up in the film. But you've got a whole side that's blocked off and two guys that have got to tackle him, and it's not going to look pretty. Both guys, he runs by one guy, shows power on another guy. Now, Derrick Henry is bigger than a lot of the people that are tackling him. And, Carl, as we saw right there, and we get to the next play, 
I mean, he's got speed, too. He he's can run really inside. Fast. That was an outside run. That's speed, right? He eludes two smaller guys, and he barely gets touched. Now, let's just take a look at this one. Look counter. Now, again, he's not hard to find, folks. When he takes his little jab step, if you're a linebacker here, you just follow the guy who has the ball. He takes a jab step, boom. Watch the inside linebacker. He's right where he's supposed to be, right? And then the next guy, he's got eyes on him. But up front, you get a guy who's collapsed up front, which makes a hole to the inside, and you see he follows it. He's got great vision. So if you're the double team on the nose tackle, if you can hold up, your linebacker's free. This is a free run right here. This guy has got this gap. But because your nose tackle gets, gets tackled, basically gets double teamed, you can see the vision, and he sees it because everybody else is blocked. He's got a tunnel to run right through. And no safety wants to see him coming downhill. All right. We got one more uh, look at Derrick Henry and uh, just the challenges that he faces. Now we're going to the other side with him coming right at you, and it's like a freight train coming at you. Yeah, now that's a direct run. As you can see, he's bottled up on the outside. That's a direct outside run, Bob. There's no, there's no pulling guards. There's no traps. He's headed outside. But he sees that this guy is semi-set the edge, and this guy's got vision right here, right? So he just keeps moving his feet, and you can see the linebacker, who actually has a good shot at him, he fakes him out. So he's got moves. He's the complete package. Yeah, and that's C.J. Mosley, who's an outstanding yeah. linebacker for the Jets. All right, to the other side of the ball we go. Tennessee was ranked in the top 10 defensively. Uh, Carl, they were ranked 10th in sacks. Now, obviously, they suffered a huge loss when Harold Landry suffered a torn ACL in practice last mm -hmm. week. But Mike Vrabel and this, this team know how to scheme to get pressure on the quarterback. And that's the, the operative word here is scheme, which means that they're either going to give you an extra rusher somewhere coming from the defensive backfield or they're going to run some type of twist and get a guy open. But the other thing they do, they can line up and make you block one-on-one, five-on-five. -on -five. But here you'll see a blitzer coming in off the, the bottom of your screen, untouched. So you've got, you've got enough linemen. You know, if you look here, you look here, and your back can come over, but they don't get it blocked up. You got a free blocker. And no one gets the blitzer. Yeah, that's Kevin Byard, the safety, who's an all-pro, Pro Bowl caliber player who also can make plays on the deep end. We'll take another look at a little more pressure. Yeah, here's another pressure look they'll give you, Bob. Now, this is basically guys that are peppering a blitz. They call it a pepper because you've got a guy threatening here, a guy threatening here, a guy threatening here. And so they're going to end up trying to block down and turn a guy loose. So communication is the key. You'll see everybody's blocking down, the linebackers pull out, it's a sack. And then the other way they get you is when they just, they line up and give you a twist. Now this is one whole side of the line of scrimmage that goes here, 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 and this guy comes all the way around from a complete other side of the football. All right, that was Strategy with Carl Banks, brought to you by PSENG, providing safe and reliable energy now and in the future. We're going to take a time out when we come back. Madeline Burke is ready to go with Victor Cruz and Sean O'Hara over under. That and much more here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. We're back here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. On Sunday, it's the Giants and Titans in Tennessee. Well, it's time for this week's edition of Over Under as we welcome in Madeline Burke, Sean O'Hara, and Victor Cruz. Time now for some week one predictions with a little game of Over Under. I'm here with Victor Cruz, Sean O'Hara. Sean, I'm gonna start with you on this one. 
Let's get right into it. Over under 10 combined catches by Giants rookies against Tennessee this week. Mm, Giants rookies. Are right, you asking O-Lyman about the passing game? I, I'm <laughs> going to take the under on this one. I think I don't want them to have over 10 catches, Vic. I want them to pound the rock. But I think Bellinger gets some carries. You can't give Wandell enough touches. I can't wait to see this kid. I think he's explosive, but I'll take the under. I'm going over. I think those guys are going to be uh, impactful in this game. I think there's going to be moments where Daniel Jones is looking for Wandell to make some plays, looking for Bellinger to get some things out of the backfield and make some plays. So I'm going over. I got faith in my rookies. Okay, a little change up. I'm going to agree with you here. I'm going to go under because there are just two rookies. And I saw, you know, last year Daniel Jones spread the ball around quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go under. It is week one. Let's ease into it. Um, Victor, over under three sacks by the Giants defense. Uh, I'm going over. I want those guys the ball. And if you look at it, I mean, those guys get after the quarterback now, right? You got those guys up front. They understand how to get to the quarterback. They're one year older. They understand this defense now. So I'm just excited about what this defense is going to do, especially up front. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm going to take the over on this. Even though Aziz Ojolari and Kayvon Thibodeau are a little bit questionable, they're both a little banged up, I think Wink Martindale's got some things that he's schemed up. He's going to fire some cowboy blitzes, get some pressures, and Ryan Tannehill was the second most sacked quarterback in the league. So despite the fact they run the ball a lot, Ryan Tannehill has not been getting the ball out very quick. I'm going to agree with you as well. Over. And plus, Wink Martindale loves to get after the quarterback. Let's take the over all day on that sack count. Leo all Williams, right. have, a, have a day, buddy. Yeah, big Please cat, do. big sack. Please do. Right there. Let's make it happen. <laughs> All right, Sean, over under two rushing attempts by Giants wide receivers. I like this one a lot. I'm going to go with the over on this one. Wondell Robinson, I mentioned him before. He was an all the number one all-purpose back coming out of high school. This guy had 2,000 yards three straight years and 47 touchdowns his senior year in high school. So I, I think he could, himself could have over two carries. Yeah, I'm going over as well. We all know Coach Daybo likes to run those trick plays, likes to keep the defenses all balanced. So we're always looking to see one of those wrinkles or maybe two throughout the, the, the course of the game. And Coach Debo is no stranger to that, so I'm going over. I think I'm going to go with the push here. I think they will get creative, but not just that creative. Again, a lot of ball game left. It's a long <laughs> season. All right, that's a wrap for us. Sending it back now to Bob and Carl in the Fieldhouse. Carl, they talked about the rookie receivers having to contribute. The Giants are going to need their rookies to contribute a lot this season, including this Sunday. Well, that's the norm in the NFL. It always has been, Bob. When you draft rookies, that have a skill set, it's not time to wait. It's time to put them in there, let them get the experience. But guys like uh, Wondell Robinson can really add to what Brian Dable wants to do with Kadarius Toney and with Kenny Galladay and with Sterling Shepard. We're going to take a time out on the program. When we come back, we're going to take you above the numbers here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Peyton. Hey, Peyton. It's Eli. Your brother? Eli. What's up, man? Well, season two of my show is starting up again, and I was, uh, you know, hoping since you're such a big fan of mine that you'd come and be a guest again this year. Uh, I don't know. Let me check my schedule here. No, I don't think I can do it, Eli. I'm pretty booked. Come on, man. Don't make me tell everybody that high school basketball story where you threw the full length shot with. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. All right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Perfect. I'll have my people call your people. I'll give you like my new cell phone number. Year two of the Eli Manning show should be a lot of fun. Obviously, Eli and Peyton certainly have the comedic routine down perfectly. As we welcome you back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. It's the Giants and Titans on Sunday in Nashville. Now it's time for this week's edition of Above the Numbers with Paul Dottino and Victor Cruz. Well, now it's time to go above the numbers for the Giants and Titans game. And, you know, Victor, my first guy has to be the guy who's now cornerback one for the Giants, and that would be Adoree Jackson. Okay. Now, last year he was their second cornerback behind James Bradbury. He allowed a career-low 52% completions on targets to him, so that's really good. Also had one interception against Tampa and had eight pass breakups. But I think... 
he's kind of an above the numbers guy for the season because he would love to improve on both of those numbers. Absolutely. I love Adoree Jackson. I love the things he brings to the table. Obviously being cornerback number one, understanding that he has to go out there and be a solid cornerstone for this defense in order for them to have some success. I'm going to stay in the defense in that secondary too, uh, Paul, because I'm going with Julian Love, a veteran guy, three career interceptions, one a year ago, 66 total tackles. That means he's putting his nose in there. He's getting in the fight. He's getting in the trenches and he's being opportunistic. Good things happen when you have active safeties like this that kind of rally around the football and I'm excited to see what he does week one. Now it's interesting about Julia Love because this is the first time in his four year career with the Giants he comes in as a full time starter Victor. Mm -hmm. Remember over the first three seasons he's only played in a combined 55% of the snaps and in each of those first three seasons he's only had one interception but we know he's smart mm -hmm. and we know he has good hands. Now, how he is able to cover a guy like Woods or Burks or anybody else who gets into that secondary against Tannehill, the veteran quarterback is going to try to play games with these guys. Yeah, absolutely. And those are the matchups that are going to be fun to watch throughout the football game, right? Robert Woods, another veteran receiver, understands route running. How's he going to match up in this secondary with Julian Love, et cetera? And obviously, Adoree Jackson as well, getting his hands on guys, rerouting them. Traylon Burks, kind of a bigger wide receiver. It's going to be important to reroute him and get him off his route so he's just not comfortably running routes up and down the field on us creating receptions. All right, let's flip it to the guy who's got to go below the numbers. If you're the Giants, you want to limit Bud Dupree, the outstanding pass rushing outside linebacker. Now, Dupree is now two years removed from ACL surgery. Remember, he was with the Steelers, then got hurt, was with the Titans last year. But this is a guy who, when he was at full strength with Pittsburgh a few years ago, had double-digit sacks and almost 70 tackles. He is dangerous. Yeah, he's a force. And our offensive line has to understand where he is at all times, understand how we're going to uh, block him, how we're going to keep him away from the quarterback, and just keep him off balance. Misdirection, a lot of different things going directly at him to negate the speed and his ability to come upfield. And something's going away from him, too, to get away from that trouble. So to see just our plan of attack against him specifically and see where we go, because he's definitely a force off that edge. Now, one thing very interesting is how the Titans are going to use him because Harold Landry is now out because of injury. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times Dupree's going to flip-flop, but during the course of the preseason, he was usually lined up over the left tackle, which means Andrew Thomas draws this assignment. Victor. Yeah, and he's got to be anchored down, understand what happens. And this is every week in the NFL. He, he understands every week he lines him up, every week that he buckles his chin strap is going to be against a premier guy, and he has to be ready. All right, well, that is our Above the Numbers for this week with the Giants and the Titans. Back to you, Bob. Carl, Dory Jackson was originally drafted by the Tennessee Titans in the first round. Julian Love voted a captain. Look, there's some questions about this secondary. Now, maybe in this game, it might not be as big a factor because of Derrick Henry, but what does this secondary have to be for this team to be successful? Well, I think the operative word, Bob, is consistent because they're going to be in a lot of man coverage. This is the the uh, construct of a Wink Martindale defense. They're going to bring some pressure, but they're going to find themselves in one-on-one -on -one coverage a lot. And yeah, we'll get a little bit more into the Titans when we return. Head coach Dable will rejoin us here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Well, it's time, huh? You know, you kind of switch into game plan mode and, you know, it's about us. It's about us executing our plays and, and doing what we need to do as a unit. You know, Derek Henry, that's the top back in the league. So just go out there and play our keys and do what we know how to do here and run to the ball. I'm going to do everything in my power to help this team win. Second and 12, good protection for Jones. It's the real thing now, and um, obviously, I mean, we all believe that we, we can win, and um, we're going to do everything that we can to come out with a win. I mean, it's week one, so I would say it's always a little bit more uh, excitement because it's finally going to get somebody for real. We're just all ready to go. I tell you what. You get up every morning, you see that skyline over there, and you know you're in the greatest city in the world and the greatest place to be to work at. And I just fired up to actually get into some real games. Giant players certainly fired up for this first opportunity on Sunday in Nashville against the Titans. We welcome you back to the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Bob Papa, Carl Banks, Giants head coach Brian Dable. And, Coach, obviously, you open up the season on Sunday on the road. Tennessee's a very good football team coming off last year. What are some of the key tenants that you have on your board 
for this first game as far as preparation and getting ready to play in this environment? Yeah, well, this is a good, sound, fundamental football team. Coach Rabel does a great job with, with really all three areas. You know, they were first in the conference in AFC last year. They've been in the playoffs the last three years. He's had four winning records. Uh, they're tough. They play with great fundamentals, and, and we're going to have to do a good job on our end. Coach, also, all over the building, part of the game plan is also your preparation, your non-football preparation. I see things like how to keep your body from getting stiff on the flight, hydration, you know, all little details that tend to make a difference that lead up to game day. Yeah, it, it's all about our process and how we do things leading up to the game. Uh, you know, Sunday is a, or Saturday or Thursday, whenever you play, is a, is a player's day. So what we try to do as a staff, not just the coaching staff, but the strength staff, the weight staff, the training staff, is, is give them all the things that we can give them, tools to be successful. Obviously, Derrick Henry, a two-time Pro Bowler, and he has been a beast even before he got hurt last year. Uh, he was leading the league in rushing. What are just some of the challenges when you're going against a guy like that as far as not letting him wreck the game? Yeah, easier said than done. He's a, he's a pretty dynamic player. He's, he's strong with the ball in his hands. He can catch. He's, he's a dynamic football player, one of the best players in the league, and we'll certainly have our hands full. Coach, complimentary football. Obviously... Uh, as you and Joe Shane have come in and this entire new staff, both in the front office and coaching staff, um, you kind of churn in the roster. You're going to keep churning in the roster. Talk a little bit about the art of complementary football and why that's so necessary in today's NFL, especially with the roster as consisted right now. Yeah, well, each game is its own unique entity, if you will. And, you know, decisions that need to be made on, on fourth down or where you are in field position certainly come into play each week based on your opponent, the quarterback, how their kicking game is doing. Uh, we spent a lot of time, just the, the three coordinators and myself, of talking about that, of how we want to play it offensively versus defensively and in the kicking game. And all those three things have to mesh well together uh, to play complementary football. Then you got Ryan Tannehill, who uh, obviously had a really good year last year. Um, he's fit in nicely to what they do offensively. Um, just to talk a little bit about what you've seen from him over the years that's impressed you since leaving Miami and finding some gold in Tennessee. Yeah, he's done a really good job there. He's, he's smart with the football. You know, the system that they run for him really fits his skill set, and he operates it very well. He's a, he's a really good general on the field. He's won a lot of football games, a lot of important football games, and, uh, you know, he's, we certainly got our respect. Think he'll be nervous before kickoff on Sunday? No, I think if you're prepared, I think you'll always have a different type of feeling. You know, it was a, a different feeling for the first preseason game than it was the second and third. So I'm sure there'll be some of that. Well, now we're focused on the Giants and the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. Giants and Titans are presented by Invisalign, the official smile of the New York football Giants. A reminder, Giants fans, uh, right after the game, keep it right here on MSG for Giants Post Game Live. We'll hear from Coach Dable and dissect everything that happened in the Giants Tennessee Titans. So for Carl Banks, Coach Dable, and our entire crew, I'm Bob Papa. Thanks for watching the debut of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop.